Welcome everyone. Happy Friday evening or whatever day and time it is where you are tuning in from. I'm really grateful that you are joining us today. My name is Lee Pfeffer and I am the manager of museum experience here at the GLBT Historical Society. I'm actually in the museum uh, right now for this program and I'm so glad that I get to spend this evening with you. Uh, we have a really wonderful program tonight, but I wanted to start by acknowledging that the GLBT Historical Society is based on Ohlone tribal land. I invite any Indigenous folks with us today to make themselves visible and known in the chat and be recognized as we honor the contemporary and ancestral lives of America's Indigenous peoples. This event is being recorded and it will be posted to our YouTube channel and our website. And if you're watching along with us live, we welcome your active participation in the chat we encourage you to post comments, observations, and questions for our participants. We're going to have a Q&A portion, so we'd really love to see uh, what you all think. And you know, feel free at any point to start putting questions in the chat, and we will uh, save them for our Q&A. Uh, before I turn it over, uh, I want to also tell you a little bit about the Historical Society and the work that we do. Founded in 1985, the GLBT, or Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender Historical Society, is recognized internationally as a leader in the field of LGBTQ public history. Our mission is to collect, preserve, exhibit, and make accessible to the public materials and knowledge to support and promote understanding of LGBTQ history, culture, and arts in all their diversity. Our operations are centered around two sites, one of which I'm in right now, the GLBT Historical Society Museum, located in the heart of San Francisco's Castro. We've been open here since 2011, and we are open now for you to come on by. You can get tickets on our website. And we also have the Dr. John P. DiCecco Archives and Research Center, and that is in the Mid-Market District. You can make appointments to research, and you can check out a, an ever-growing array of exhibitions, events, and archival resources online on our website at glbthistory.org. Finally, I want to thank all of our members and donors who make our work possible. If you're not already a card-carrying member of the Historical Society, I invite you to consider joining today. Members get a whole bunch of really neat perks. Uh, not least of which free admission for yourself and a guest to the museum during our open hours. You also get uh, access to special members only events and a discount in the store, which would be really nice for you uh, if you have any ideas for some holiday uh, gifts that you would like to get some folks who want a little bit more LGBTQ history in their life. Um, so if you uh, are interested in becoming a member or if you'd like to learn about other ways to support the society, you can visit glbthistory.org slash join dash give. And uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of context about tonight's program. Um, tonight is our screening of the play Margaret Hoyman who is a survivor of the Derenstadt ghetto and the, and the Auschwitz, Nuggenam, and Bergen-Belsen concentration camps. She's perhaps the first lesbian survivor of the Holocaust to relay her story, and that is gonna be depicted in the play we're going to be watching tonight. Uh, we're gonna be bringing up some folks who were involved in the production to talk a little bit about it after we uh, watch the play. And this program is actually being uh, co-sponsored by uh, our, our wonderful colleagues over at the Jewish Family and Children's Services Holocaust Center. And so I would love to bring up Yudita Kanfer from the JFCS Holocaust Center to uh, just make a few remarks and kind of talk a little bit about uh, the significance of their work and uh, you know the world of what we're gonna be diving into tonight. So let me bring on Yudita. Hello. Thanks so much, Lee. My name um, is Yudita Kanfer. I am the Director of Community Education at the JFCS Holocaust Center, which is Northern California's primary resource on the Holocaust and other genocides. We reach 28,000 students and adults per year with our educational and public programming. Our work increases awareness about antisemitism, hatred, racism, and our goal is to inspire moral courage and social responsibility in future generations. 
this time of year is particularly weighty in terms of Holocaust remembrance. This Tuesday and Wednesday, we commemorated Kristallnacht, or the Night of Broken Glass, when on November 9th and 10th, 1938, Nazi paramilitary units and supporters destroyed Jewish shops, homes, and synagogues across Germany and Austria. This violence and desecration, and desecration especially with respect to synagogues, happened on a Friday night when, just like tonight, Jews were welcoming in Shabbat or the Sabbath, the day of rest. For the Western world, Kristallnacht was a terrible foreboding of what the Nazi regime was capable of. But our event tonight was scheduled with a later stage of the genocide in mind. That is the period in late 1941, when the Nazi regime had already begun its systematic mass murder of Jewish men, women, and children. In November, 1941, the Nazis established a camp called Theresienstadt, and this area was multilingual. So Theresienstadt was the German name and Terezin was the Czech name. Either way, it's about 40 miles north of Prague. Theresienstadt had several functions. It was a ghetto or an area of enclosed residence. It was a labor camp and it was also a transit camp, which means that those who were interned there, it was a holding point for them um, and, and later they were, they were sent to ghettos and killing centers further east. It was 80 years ago this month, the exact date was November 24th, 1941, that the first 1,000 Jews arrived at Theresienstadt. I'll let others elaborate more on the camp and on the testimony that you'll see tonight. I got a sneak peek. I personally found it incredibly moving, but I wanna say this before I end. For many years at the Holocaust Center, I led a program for teens called The Next Chapter, and the teens met one-on-one -on -one or in groups with Holocaust survivors, and the survivors told them their stories. And um, several years ago, one of the teens in this program, um, she had been in the program several years before, and then she contacted me. She wanted a rec recommendation. And she said to me, you know what this program did for me? She said, I used to walk down the street and I didn't really pay attention to anything. Um, and, you know, people would walk, you know, they would pass me by and I would just, you know, see their faces, whatever. And she said, now when I walk down the street and I see people coming towards me, I see their stories. That's why I find the work that we do at the Holocaust Center so meaningful. It's the work of sharing stories, whether it's Holocaust testimony, like the play that you're going to see tonight, or it's accounts today of how each of us find our own truth. All these stories reveal who we are as individuals and what our responsibilities are to the greater whole. So we are so honored to partner on this event as we think together with you about how stories of the past can enlighten our present. Forgot to mute myself. I forgot to unmute myself as I hasn't, haven't done this a billion times before. Thank you so much, Yudita. Uh, we're really honored to be partnering with y'all for this. Um, we really wanted to make sure that, you know, we, we brought in you know lots of different people and, and had this be a collaborative effort so i really appreciate you coming on and, and giving some folks a little bit of context and um folks should check out the work y'all are doing over at the jfcs's uh website here i put it up on the screen um we can also uh we'll put a link uh actually in the comments a little bit later into the program um, so I now, before we get to actually watching the play, I would love to bring on, excuse me, uh, I would love to bring on the director and co-author of The Amazing Life of Margaret, Ho Margaret Hoyman, uh, Dr. Erica Hughes, who is awake at uh, a very early hour of the morning because uh, she is in the UK. So uh, 
Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Bye to you, Dita. Thank you very much. Hi, Erica. Hi. Thank you for, for being up at what is it? Uh near nearly uh it's, it's after two in the morning for it's you, right? 12 a.m. But uh but who's counting? Uh <laughs> no, um I'm just so uh so thrilled uh to be here. Um uh so uh so yeah, so my name is um, Dr. Eric Hughes, and I'm a reader in perfor in performance at the University of Portsmouth, um, which is in the south of England. And um, and I just first of all I have to say thank you uh, so much to um, <clears throat> excuse me to the um, GLBT uh, Historical Society um, and the JFCS uh, for sponsoring this event and um, for for being interested in um, and of course in Margot's life and in the the work that we're trying to do. Um, uh, to get her testimony uh, to a wider audience. And so providing that audience, we're just so, so grateful on behalf of the, the whole production team. Um, uh, also, uh, so Edita, I just have to say her words were just so beautiful and uh, really spoke to exactly the, the themes um, uh, that really drove us uh, to want to use theater um, uh, to, as a way, as a means um, uh, to, to reach people uh, when it comes to, to Holocaust testimony, because it really is about sharing stories um, first and foremost. So um, to that end, um, I'll uh, just maybe talk for just one, two minutes about uh, the play itself. And so audiences will have just a little bit more information on um, what you're about uh, to watch. Uh, yes. So the, as, you, um, as you said, so The Amazing Life of Margaret Hoyman, is uh, a work of documentary theater um, that offers uh, a glimpse into uh, a very different kind of story than the ones that you often hear regarding the, the Holocaust, um, because Margaret is, um, is a lesbian. And she was born in 1928 in Germany. And, um, and as you mentioned, she's a survivor of Theresienstadt Ghetto, Auschwitz, um, Neuengamme, which is a camp that um, uh, I don't know if people would have heard of necessarily. It's not maybe as famous as the other two, uh, but Neugammen was a, um, a complex of camps actually that was in Hamburg. And uh, there were work camps as part of this complex as well. And so actually quite a bit of, of the, the testimony that she gave uh, had to do with her time in Neugammen. Um, and, uh, and she was also at Bergen-Belsen. And today, uh, Margaret is 93 years old and she lives in Arizona. So the words from this play are all taken from transcripts of interviews between um, Margaret and the historian Anna Haikova. And uh, over a period of several months, Anna and I worked together on editing down hours of interview testimony into one 45 minute uh, script. So this was done completely as a collaborative project between myself, a theater director and performance studies scholar and Anna, um, a historian of the Holocaust. But it's also a work of collaboration between our respective universities, uh, the University of Portsmouth and the University of Warwick, which is where uh, Anna teaches. And, um, and so both of our institutions also supported this. Um, uh, in kind and uh, and financially. Um, and so we really see this as a work of, of arts education and research as well into arts education. So uh, Anna and I worked on the script and I'll talk about that a little bit more after the play. Uh, and then we collaborated with um, my colleague, Dr. Phoebe Rumsey and my student who's now an alum, uh, Aisha Evans on ways in which we could uh, strive to share and speak the testimony without playing a, a role per se, but rather building a personal connection between the individual reading the testimony and the person whose story this truly is. So to that end, um, you'll see Phoebe and Aisha reading the testimony and they are each carrying the script or transcript with them um, throughout the performance. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that's all I'll share uh, before we get started. I'll be happy to answer any questions we have uh, after the play. Um, but yeah, I um, thank you so much for listening and for um, for sharing this with us tonight. Wonderful. Um, and uh, once we uh, finish with the play, uh, we'll be bringing, uh, as you mentioned, we'll be bringing Erica back on and we'll also be bringing up uh, Aisha will be joining us and uh, Perhaps uh, Anna, she's uh, she's not not feeling super well right now. She's she's been ill, so uh, we're waiting on confirmation to see if we will see her. And unfortunately, uh, Phoebe was not able to make it due to a scheduling con conflict. But uh, you will see her wonderful performance.
performance, and uh, we will be happy to pass on any comments or, or uh, uh, observations you would like us to pass on to her. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to bring us down and bring up the play and enjoy. And uh, the running time is 45 minutes, so we will see you all shortly. <laughs> 